Hello. Today in this video, I would like to show you how you can use one of the power of your host file, hosts file, excuse me, that's on your operating system in Linux, Mac, Windows, Unix. To basically give some background to what this is going on or show an example. A couple months ago, I was asked to do a job for a company where they needed some additions and some edits to their uh, PHP slash MySQL application. Now, one of the things I like to do as a web developer is whenever I do any type of job, you know, for personal or for business, I like to basically take a copy of the working program, back that up, then also take another copy of the pro current program and move it into a test environment. Now, depending on the size, if it's a small size, uh, this isn't going to be much of an issue. But if you're talking about a bigger application, sometimes developers before you used app certain type of applications or maybe like to do this, but they liked to program links to other pages or scripts by using the absolute path instead of the relative path. If I if you can kind of take a look here, there's not showing much. If I if I actually edit the if I edit this index file here, you'll notice the href has http colon forward slash forward slash jcwebconcepts.net slash index.php. The relative path just has index.html. Now of course in a different type of application, there might be many variables, and this might look different. This is just the basis of it. So, now, instead of going out and finding all these absolute paths, or there might not even be any absolute paths, but instead of looking and spending time and wasting time, you can use the host file to your advantage. Now, before I move on, some of you might be saying, well, what's the big deal? Okay, let's say there is a link that would actually bill a credit card, make a change to a MySQL database. If you're in your test environment testing your changes and you click it, you might charge someone's credit card or you might delete something in the database that sh you shouldn't be. Now... So what we're going to do is we're going to use the host file to to help us here. So I'm going to use Vim. You can use any text editor you want. Uh, Vim, Nano, EE, uh, Notepad++, whichever your preference. But we're going to go to the e etc hosts file. Now this is a typical host file and what it looks like unless you've edited yours already and you know what you're doing. So uh, what you want to do is, I'm going to hit I for insert mode, just in case there's some non-Vim users. And we're going to type in 127.0.0.1, and hit tab, and you do http colon forward slash forward slash www.jcwebconcepts.net. We are going to add another line that's going to have HTTP jcwebconcepts.net. Now, of course, this would do be with any domain you're working with. So if you're working with bob.com, it would be www.bob.com, not jcwebconcepts.net. So we're going to go ahead and add two more here. And what this is for is these are going to be the basics of what uh, an absolute path URL would look like. Unless there's an FTP, which, you know, of course, the key thing would be is you could ask ahead of time, but you might not get this answer. So, and you can't, there's no wildcards in the host file, so... That's why you'd want to do that. 
So we're going to hit colon W, well actually hit escape. Then we're going to hit uh, colon WQ for write and then quit. So now when I click on this link, it should open a new tab and go to my blog. But because I added the host file, if I click on that, it brings me back to that same page. Because instead of instead of going in, instead of going to my actual domain, the host file is telling that this domain, any of these domains, the IP address of that domain is this. So it doesn't even go out to an external DNS server. This gets stopped before it hits the DNS servers, which again is kind of a nice tool. Now, of course, there's always a risk that you might miss one of these. And what I'm saying is, let's say there was a link that's going to ftp.jcwebconcepts.net. That is why it's always important to back up the data, back up any databases, anything before you do that. Uh, so you want to do that. Now, you could probably say to me, well, John, we'll just do that, and if you know, if something happens and it corrupts the database, I'll just do it. Key is you want to try to get, not have to run into those things. So I hope this was a helpful tutorial. If it was, or you have any questions or comments, you know, please go ahead and comment below. And I thank you.